40 by 30 house we're doing. Just the three of us, Luke and Eric are pouring on another job in the same town at the same time. So we gotta get two jobs done today. So after today, we're gonna put you on the spot. Okay. It's gonna be, we're gonna get everybody together. We're gonna have a company meeting. We're gonna ask you, who do you like working with better? Me and Darren or Luke and Eric? Is this a, is this a video? Is this a video? Yeah. Now becoming a reality TV yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. All right, welcome everybody. You're going to get to see how we pour this 40 by 30 floor with just the three of us today using a vibra screed, so a vibrating screed with a battery in it. And then Luke and Eric, our other two workers, they're on the other side of the same town pouring a garage floor. So we got to get two floors poured today because of just some scheduling conflicts we've had. So we just split the crew up. Young Luke right there on the left, he gets to work with us today. That's what that little thing was about because a lot of times he's working with Eric and Luke on jobs finishing concrete. He doesn't get to work with me and Darren that much, so we were just kind of having a little fun with him this morning. Now, we got two trucks coming. I think this was around 16 or 17 yards. You saw this had some deeper areas in it in the middle for our load-bearing walls. And the builder... The builder, instead of them pouring the footings when they did the walls, they just dug it out deeper in the floor, and we're just going to pour the floor deeper in those areas. The thing we got to worry about is after we get them filled with concrete, you know, sometimes you forget that they're there and you, you step in them, and you'll see that happen <laughs> a little bit later in the video where one of my guys stepped in it and we almost fell right over. But what I'm doing right there is I'm magging the edges. Now, we come in... We come in earlier, like a day before, two or three days before, and we set up a laser, we shoot a grade. This grade here that I'm magging to, we snapped a chalk line. I don't know if you can see it there sometimes, but there is a there is a red chalk line on there. And we're on this job, we're matching the top of that concrete wall over there to your right, kind of where that truck driver is standing on. So we just use that as our benchmark when we set our laser up and then what we like to do is is MAGA, what we, what we call MAGA pad, nice and smooth all the way around the perimeter. And that gives us something to go by when we start putting the screed to the floor and leveling it. Now you can see once you fill that deep area up, it just basically goes away. <laughs> and it's, sometimes it's hard to know exactly where the edges are afterwards. And that goes right to about the top of your boot right there. So... If you step in that thing, pretty good chance you're going to get some concrete down in your boot. Now we, luckily on this on this job, we could back the truck right up to the foundation. This road is right on a lake, and this side of the road, the, it has a pretty steep hill to it, as you can kind of see in the back. And the access to some of these newer foundations on this side is kind of, kind of tricky sometimes. A lot of times we just got to get a pump truck. And the guys, they came in and they, the excavator, for whatever reason, I guess he was in a hurry to get out of here, but he actually just loomed and seated and everything all the way around before we even got the floor done. So we kind of had to mess up the front lawn just a little bit. We did end up raking it out after we were all done, but it's, it's still hard to get the ruts out from the concrete truck. And we weren't going to just get a pump just because of that, $1,500 for a pump. Uh, when you can back a truck right up to it, it just seemed like a little bit of a waste of money versus raking the dirt out. Now what I'm doing is we're kind of being careful where that deep spot is so we don't step in it. And we're shooting our grades using using a laser level. And then we'll strike a wet pad in the concrete just like this. We don't need grade pins to go by. We don't need... Uh, you know, a grade two by four to go by. We just, we everything we do screeding is basically wet padding it like this. We'll go right off a wet pad, you know, and we just be really careful when we screed. Using a vibrating screed like this, this one has a 12 foot board. They, they come in all different size boards, but basically what we're doing is the guy running the vibra screed, he's just, he's just going nice and slow and steady and he's looking at both ends, the left side and the right side, and making sure he's kind of leaving that straight line like that. You can kind of see it over there on the left. If it doesn't leave a line, then that means that that part of the screed board has risen up higher 
than the concrete and it's going to have a little bit of a hump in the floor so that's pretty much what you see right there is what you want as far as leaving a line and then I'm just raking the concrete behind it that's about as much concrete as you want behind it right there you don't want any more than that and you don't really want much less than that because he wants to be pulling back some concrete as he's as he's uh, giving that thing some throttle and some vibration and then it's it's my job and Luke's job over there just to make sure he doesn't get low and he doesn't get too high you get it too high it's just gonna vibrate back under the screed and you're gonna start leaving humps in the floor beat and it's gonna be real wavy so that's kind of what it looks like behind a vibra screed right there and you can see I got just a little bit of a roll going for him if you leave it too high too it gets hard to pull that thing back the slump we pour we like pouring we use mid-range water reducer and everything sometimes we'll even use a high range and what that does that's a chemical they add in at the concrete plant when they batch the concrete and that mid-range water reducer allows you to pour a little bit looser slump without adding water it's a chemical they put in the concrete itself so if you take that mid-range water reducer out, you know, the slump we're pouring, let's say, I don't know, we're probably at around a six or a six and a half inch slump. Slump is how loose the concrete is. So if you take the mid-range water reducer out, this would probably be around a four inch slump instead of a six and a half. So it goes from a four to a six and a half. So really the strength of this concrete is what the strength would be at a four inch slump. I know a lot of guys a lot of guys comment on how loose of concrete I pour and you know when I hear that I'm just like well you just you, either you don't listen to my videos at all or you don't know anything about concrete at all <laughs> because a lot of guys around the country I mean a lot of concrete plants nowadays have these water reducers it's it's almost standard in most mixes um, very I think it's very few concrete companies that don't have them anymore they're probably some of the older concrete plants maybe but with the chemicals they use you know the air entrainments the water reducers stuff like that it's pretty easy to pour a loose slump like we do get your floors down without having to work too hard and uh, not lose any strength in the floor we got almost all that that middle section filled in now the real deep part and we're just a little bit over halfway so it's looking good as far as concrete goes not running out today <laughs> that's always a key is making sure you order enough concrete and don't run out but you don't want to order too much and waste too much either that's kind of what a you know right around a six six and a half inch slump looks like coming out of the chute you can see it's not like it's not like crazy wet and it but it does pull around a little bit easy you can see how it mag floats right there mag floats pretty easy I'm going by that red line on the wall. It's, can't really see it too good at that angle, but it's there. It's pretty easy to see. And that's kind of what the guys are doing too as they pull the concrete out of the chute is they'll try to get it as close as they can to that red line without getting it lower. Oh, see Darren stepped in it right there. <laughs> that is a good shot about how it flows out of the chute. What do you guys think? Would you rather not pour with water reducer and pour a three or a four inch slump where the concrete's barely coming out of the chute and you kind of have to shovel it around or would you rather add, add a, a few ounces of a chemical, a few ounces per yard to make it look like this, to make it pull around a lot easier for about a, I don't know, about a, a buck or two a yard extra. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We pour concrete every day. Every single morning we have concrete lined up pretty much. So maybe that makes a difference too. If you don't pour it every single day, I don't know. I'd probably still use it myself now that we've used it so much. Now the floor that Eric and Luke were pouring on the other side of town was a, a 24 by 24 garage. So they got... They got concrete at 6 a.m. too, just like we did. So they should be done. They should be just about done pouring that over there. I think 
Eric should be showing up here any minute. There was only like two miles away. So I think they're going to come over to this job after and just help us finish this up if if we're not already done. <laughs> Now we like to screed, we like to hand screed or rod our grade pads like this. That way, you know, it doesn't have any vibration. That way we know that we're, we're getting down perfectly on our grade pads. And those grade pads are set right to the exact height that we need the floor to be. Yeah, you can kind of see Eric pulling in in the back. And watch this. He's going to step in the deep part. <laughs> I'm telling you, them things disappear and you don't know where they are. You forget real easy <laughs> once you fill them in. So just luckily Darren's got good balance. He didn't fall over. We don't like to vibroscreed around pipes, you know, in between pipes like that either. Because stopping and starting with these quite frequently is where you're going to run into problems you know with the floor not being as level as it should be so when we do start up one of these we like to just go slow and steady all the way to the end until we're done and that's where you're going to make sure you know that's just a little easier to get the floor nice and level that way you can see as I work my way backwards Eric and Luke they just they rake the concrete it's really their job to get it as close to grade as possible but leave it a little bit high and then it's my job just to watch the ends and you can see when Darren runs that bow float when he runs that bow float over it right after me there's no there's no gaps under it both ends are touching which means there's no humps there and that's what it should look like right there that take that probably took about a minute to get from one end to the other right there. Maybe a minute, minute and a half, something like that. Now I'm changing out the battery. We don't we didn't check the battery before we started, but usually that that's a small battery too for this. That's a five amp. But that five amp will do multiple floors. We don't usually have to change the battery right in the middle of the pour. Usually we'll check it first. Now that's a pretty good shot of how easy it is to run one of those things. But again, the key is the two rakers. You can see how, how much the rakers are working versus how much I'm working with that thing. Now what I like to do is when, whenever we do go around pipes like this, like I don't know what that, that could be a bathroom right there. Could be part of a kitchen, I don't know. But I like to make sure the concrete floor is really nice and flat and level around any pipes and there's no humps there. So we'll just we'll just make sure we'll get the laser stick out check it with the laser mag it out and then when we go to power trial around those pipes it'll be nice and flat right there now the first load was actually setting up pretty good versus the second one so right where we're coming off that first load right there where Eric's raking the stuff around you're gonna see when we grab the screed we're gonna end up just screeding it by hand because it was setting up so much that sometimes it's a little bit more difficult with the vibra screed because there's not enough like head pressure on it. Now with a hand screed like this, you can really push down good with your, because you got both hands on it. So you can push down nice and hard if you need to, to make sure you're scoring and getting it down to grade where you need it to be. You can kind of see me and Darren pushing it down. That part, the very end of that first truck was setting up pretty good. So we just decided just to keep screeding this bay down until we got to about where the about where the vibra screed is right now. So that's the difference. There's a little bit of a difference, obviously, between hand screeding like this versus vibra screeding. <laughs> Which way do you think you guys would do it? You know, for you listening here, I think you're gonna pick the vibra screed, and probably especially if you've never never screeded concrete by hand like we do that's what magging the edges looks like right there matching the top of that wall and the guys spread that hay over the loom they got it they made quite a mess with that hay so 
It's quite a rhythm to that. There's quite a process to getting that down with two guys doing it at the same time. There again, so there's a little bit different pace. That's about as fast as you want to go with that vibrating screed. Because if you go any faster, you're just gonna you're gonna create problems in the floor. It's not gonna be as level as you want. You don't really want to go much slower either, because then concrete's gonna stop vibrating up underneath it. And you like to keep the front edge of this, the edge that's facing Darren, flat. So it's kind of cutting, it's kind of cutting the concrete level based on your other pads. If you tip that edge up a little bit, concrete's going to stop vibrating under it and you're going to just have a real wavy floor. <laughs> and we got a little bit of extra concrete in there as you can see, so we got to shovel that out. Shovel it over by the driveway. And uh, you know, not make try not to make too much of a mess on their what you call their lawn, I guess. Now on the bull float, if you notice that kind of that black head on the bull float, that's a vibrating head. We can put a battery in that and turn that on and that'll that'll slightly vibrate too and help consolidate the concrete as we bull float if we need to. It adds a little bit of weight to the bull float too. So I mean that that helps smooth out the concrete too if you need if you need the weight on the on the bull float. But all in all that works pretty good. That's from MBW, the same guys that make that that vibrating screed, the screed demon. And this is just us taking the head off. We like taking the head off and then we'll just bring it down to the concrete truck. Get everything washed up. We'll start loading everything up. That thing just is held on there by two bolts. Really easy to put it on, really easy to take off. And then as Luke finishes up, you know, we start we start loading things up. This is how much concrete we had left over. It's good there, buddy. Alright, so that'll do it for the pour. Let's see what time it is right now. It is 7.22 in the morning, 7.22 a.m. Probably took us about an hour to do that, I guess. 40 by 30. Sits up on a little hill. Unfortunately, they, they went and finished off the front lawn before we got the floor done, so we'll have to come back and touch that up. But I'm sure it's cheaper than buying a pump, you know, $1,500 pump to get here to pump this. So anyway, they can stop building now and we're not holding them up. This ought to dry pretty good today, even though it's going to stay kind of foggy and hazy, cloudy like this. These guys will be done power troweling and sawing by about noontime. So any questions or comments, leave them, leave them down in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe. We come out with a couple videos a week like this. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.